Welcome! The subject of this video is using photodiodes with op amps. I'm your host, Louis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. In a previous video, we were using photodiodes in the reverse bias configuration to switch on and off transistors. We were concerned with switching speed. In this um, video we're going to be concerned with using the photodiodes reverse leakage current to measure light intensity. Photodiode of course once again is simply a PN junction and when reverse bias it creates a depletion region. When light enters the depletion region it generates charges that form a leakage current. No, dark current is the little bit of current that will flow even when there's no light present. And as the light intensity increases, our dark current increases. So our dark current, or the current in general, or this reverse bias leakage current, is proportional to light intensity. Before we use a photodiode simply to switch on a transistor. Light strikes photodiode, it's reverse bias, cathode to positive, and then anode through the transistor to negative. Uh, the reverse leakage current simply switched on a transistor. Now we want to go beyond this. We want to measure a voltage that's proportional to ID, our leakage current thus the voltage is proportional to the light intensity. Note that the sensitivity of a photodiode, and you're looking at two case styles here, is proportional to the surface area. As we said before, the light will pass through the anode, which is the top surface area, into the depletion region, which is directly below it larger the depletion region, the more sensitive the diode will be to light. Here we have connected the a photodiode to an LM741 op amp. This is a bipolar circuit. I'm using plus and minus 12 volts and I connect the photodiode between the negative input and ground and of course the positive input also goes to ground. IP, the leakage current, also passes through RF, that's the feedback resistor. By adjusting this feedback resistor I can control the voltage output. As shown here on this section, the voltage out is equivalent to IP times RF. In this case, I simply uh, had an LED shine a light into it, and it's in this particular configuration when the photodiode is producing max IP, it's going to output around 10 volts in this particular circuit and cut on this LED called the positive on. Now, I can change. Now, of course, that's with the light just really shining into it. I can adjust the value of RF to produce an output that's proportional to any voltage I want. Again, it's IP times R feedback. What I've done here now is just a little bit different. I have connected instead of connecting the photodiode to pin 3 and ground, I'm using the same LM741 in a bipolar configuration. I have the photodiode anode going to the minus 12 volts. It works the same way as it did before. The minor um, reverse bias current will flow through the diode and RF and we still have a V out of IP times RF. You might want to do it in this configuration because as I discussed before as the 
photodiode is more reversed bias, and assuming it's a pin diode as well, pin photodiode, I can detect higher speed pulses besides being sensitive. Of course, an LM741 is not a very fast op-amp. There are other op-amps that you can get if detection speed is important. Uh, there's a number of them you can choose from. In this case, the output once again is IP times RF and it switches on my positive uh, LED indicator. Now I've turned my photodiode around and I have connected the cathode to the plus 12. Of course I'm going to have a different uh, direction of IP. It works the same as the other circuit except it's going to be a negative V out and so negative V out is still proportional to really what's a negative IP times RF and thus it's going to put out about minus 10 volts and light up the negative LED as where it's oriented. Again, this is a bipolar circuit. In this case, I have used a, this is the same thing as the first op-amp circuit, except I'm using an LM358, which is designed to operate as a unipolar device, and I'm using 12 volts. Just like this circuit here, it works the very same way except I don't have to deal with a negative 12 volts and my output is proportional to IP times RF once again. The only difference is I could also use no you're pretty well stuck with this configuration if you're using an LM358. By the way the L the 741 and the LM358 are all used as trans impedance amplifiers. That is, they convert current to voltage. Trans impedance amplifiers convert current to voltage. This has some interesting uses. This is a TSL230A. It is a very sensitive, sort of programmable light sensor that you can use with Arduino. In fact, I have an Arduino project with using this, which I will have in a separate video. This consists of a photodiode array. It has two inputs that you can adjust the sensitivity and now it has a current to frequency converter. What it really is is a current to voltage to frequency converter. Um, and your output free by measuring your output frequency you can measure the light intensity. That's proportional to your output frequency. S2 and S3 determines your output frequency. This is a little more information on it. Eh, so uh, the picture's a little big. But this is how you would connect it to an Arduino. This is what it looks like. But we will discuss that further in another video. Like I said, the Arduino will determine the frequency out and the sensitivity, and the pulse out just goes on into any digital pin. So that completes this introduction of using photodiodes with op amps in order to measure voltage. Catch my other videos and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for look looking.